Something like this. <laughs> All right, hi everybody. My name is Erica. Um, let me just put my phone here, not because I'm expecting a call, but just so that I can keep track of time here. Um, let me grab this. All right, my name's Erica. Um, I've walked around and talked to uh, some tables here. Thank you all for being here. This is a really exciting day, and I am so glad that you all are here um, to take in this information. So now that you've gone through all of that information with your patients, your clients, right? You've gone through all of these methods. What do we do with that? What questions do we do we ask of patients? Um, so just a little bit about me first. Um, I have had I have ten years of contraceptive counseling under my belt, um, working with Planned Parenthood. Um, it was a great time. Uh, I saw and heard and answered so many wild things and not so wild things. So none of this is really linear. There's no formula. There's really nothing to follow exactly because everybody's different as you probably all know, right? Um, so again, thank you for being here. I have a couple of objectives here. Objectives that you must leave within 30 minutes, okay? <laughs> I'm totally kidding. Um, so a couple of objecti objectives that I have is uh, to help you become more comfortable and engaging in conversations with clients um, regarding birth control use. We're gonna, we're gonna discuss some of the common concerns um, that uh, I have come across with patients. You all, of course, um, if you've done contraceptive counseling, um, may have come across a lot more, but it, for the sake of time, we've kind of narrowed it down. And um, I want this more to be a conversation. Let's help each other. I know there's, you all are uh, experts and we're just wanting to help each other out and uh, follow the expertise here. So um, any questions I'll take along the way um, if you have them, okay? Um, ability to ident identify or tease out root concerns. Oftentimes we come across, one of the examples that I have is, um, I just wanna break from hormones. Um, what does that actually mean? Like there has to be a root concern, maybe not, but most often than not, I have found that there is, okay? And then I want to empower you to empower clients to use birth control, right? That's why we're here. This is why I had, I, uh, had done this work for 10 years, um, because if, we, if people want to um, plan for their families that they have, that they want to have, we want to help them do that, okay? Um, what does empowerment mean? Can somebody tell me? Anybody? Don't everybody raise their hand at the same time. Sorry, say that. Giving a person control. I heard something else. Educate. Educate. Yes. So we want to do that. Anything else? What does it mean to you? Yes. Anybody else? All of that. All of that. Yes. So this is what I want to help you to do so that you in turn can take that to your clients and help them make the best decisions for themselves, for their families, um, and have them become more confident in their decisions. Because when people are choosing birth control methods that they want to use, um, they'll be able to use them uh, in the way that they're supposed to, right? Not just tolerating it maybe, but actually using a method that they want to use and are able to use it correctly. Okay, what are some of the concerns that you all have heard? Mood swings, okay? Weight gain. Weight gain. Acne. Acne. acne, yes, I heard acne times two. Loss of sex drive. Yes, loss of sex drive. Loss of fertility. Loss of fertility. Bleeding. Bleeding, yeah, okay, great. Yes, all of those are, are legit concerns, concerns that we have to address um, as well. Um, like I said before, we're going to, we, a lot of the concerns are side effects, but there are also other concerns that may be affecting their personal life that I want to talk about, okay? So how many of you have heard of the raise of hands? I think I need a break from hormones. Me too. <laughs> okay. What is, what is this actually, what does this mean? Give me, even if you maybe don't know exactly what it means for folks, because it could be different, what do you think it means? What is, what is a patient telling you? Don't feel like themselves. Don't feel like themselves, okay. They think they'll increase their risk of certain cancers. Okay, they'll think they'll increase their risk of certain cancers if uh, people didn't hear that. Sorry, I'm repeating it so everybody hears it. They just want to reset their body. They want to reset their body, okay. Yes. So again, all of that, right? So it also ties down to patient preferences. Sometimes this also means that they don't want to use anything nothing at all 
Um, they just want to tell us something that we think we want to hear, but sometimes that means that they maybe just want to use a, uh, a fertility, uh, checking your fertility, natural, natural methods. Um, it also might mean that maybe they are sick of using a birth control pill and they want to hear other options that don't have any hormones in them, or maybe want to reduce their, um, their pill method, right? Um, maybe switching it to a lower dosage of hormones. Um, so teasing that out, I know sometimes in my experience, um, I have had some uh, medical assistants who hear this and they're like, okay, great. So you know where to get condoms? And then they're like, yeah, great. We'll have you see the doctor, right? So we really want to tease this out a little bit more um, because the ultimate goal is if they're sexually active um, and they've been using a method, we want them to help them choose uh, another method that they could potentially keep using to avoid those unintended pregnancies, right? So that's the ultimate goal there. Um, so try to tease it out a little bit. All of these, sometimes I know that oftentimes as medical assistants, we have maybe like 15 minutes to get to know your patient, to build rapport, to answer their questions, talk about all of those methods that it took us 45 minutes to go over, right? We're sort of in a time crunch, probably the same thing for providers. Um, and there's, there's, uh, there's really, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it, it's a time crunch to try to do all of that. Um, and a lot of times some of us can really perform magic, um, but really try to take that time to address that concern if that's one of them. Another one is a medication misconception, right? So somebody mentioned the loss of fertility. Right, um, I have come across uh, patients who don't want to use a depot shot uh, because they, you know, the they may lose th their menses cycle, um, and they feel that that is that's going to, in the long run, make them not have be able to have babies later. Has anybody come across that? Yeah, I see a couple head nuts. Yeah. Oh, okay, you're easier. <laughs> I thought you had a question. Okay, yeah. Um, or uh, maybe it also, you know, a lot of women, I have also come across uh, women who um, uh, have not wanted to lose their menses cycle because it, they think or they believe it's their body's natural way of cleansing, cleansing the body, right? And so if they lose their menses cycle, then at some point the body is going to become dirty is the word I've heard, not my word. Okay, so medication misconceptions. I can't really speak a lot towards, um, you know, the, the hormone levels. Um, at that point, if there's a question about the hormone level, then I direct them towards either a provider or the doc that's on staff, um, you know, because can't go beyond the scope of my practice. Okay, does anybody have any questions? Anything that they've come across or a way that they've been able to talk to their patients about this idea of, I think I need a break from hormones? Nobody? Okay, all right, moving on. Okay, another concern. Will anyone find out I'm using birth control? Has anybody come across this with patients? Is this a concern? Show me some hands here. Let's get some hands up in here. Thank you. Great. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's occasionally a problem because they don't Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Any other experiences with this? Sorry, I don't want to stand in front of anybody. Yeah, go ahead. They don't want their partner to know. Yeah. Like they worked with teens for a long time and they don't want their partners to know. Yeah, them. definitely. Even folks who are not teens, right? I've worked with, uh, with folks who don't want their partners to know, right? So a lot of this sometimes breaks down to uh, confidentiality issues, sometimes depending on what their lives are like at home, right? We don't know that. And again, we have a very limited time to talk to these folks um, to see what, what, it, what their needs are. And a lot of times it comes down to also they don't want their parents to know. Maybe partners are tracking uh, menses cycles. Parents might also be tracking menses cycles. So um, maybe it's, um, it's a method that they want to talk about that will still keep a menses cycle if their parents are checking it, if it's a minor. Um, but most often than not, these, uh, these come across, uh, I find this issue with, um, you know, with both women who are in, um, in long-term relationships and also also teens as well. 
Any other examples that you all have come across? Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. Thank you. Anybody else? No? Um, does anybody want to give an example of how they've been able to help a patient out in this type of example? Nobody? That's okay. That's okay. No, it's early. Okay. So, um, exactly right. So, the, the other issue would be also minors. How many of you work in clinics where you need consent from parents? Okay. Do you want to speak a little to that? Unless the parent signs for it, which becomes an issue, right? So, young folks, minors, teens, they, they're sort of in a unique category because they're in, that, they're in a phase where they're trying to get independence, but not really quite there yet. Um, so, it's a, it's a unique situation in that we have to be able to navigate that. So, it seems like the majority of your clinics are able to see adolescent clients. Yeah? No? Not yours? Okay. Great. So, um, so for those of you who, can, who, who don't, can you tell me a little bit about how you would, if you did see an adolescent patient, what advice would you be able to give them? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. So for those of you, and you probably already know this, but they, they do have um, confidential services. Um, and if your clinics do, please talk to each other um, so that you all get to know each other and know what your services are. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Any other questions? No. Okay. All right. So um, again, uh, these the, really there's no really direct way to to sort of answer these, but really try to take the time as much as you can to get to know your patients and see what their needs are. As um, that the young lady in the back there mentioned, there's Planned Parenthood services as well um, and confidential services where we can. Uh, we can send young folks to who don't who don't necessarily want their parents to find out if they are using birth control. Okay. Okay. All right. I don't want something inside me. How many of you have come across that? Okay. And um, you all know that they probably are are talking about IUDs, correct? Okay. And okay. Yeah. Implant. Yeah. Okay. Um, great. So. Um, Really, what do you all, can somebody give me an example? What do they think this, this is referring to? Why not? Why wouldn't they want? Foreign, body, sensitive, natural. Mm hmm They think it might be painful. Mm hmm Dirty. Dirty. Painful infections, okay. Uh, having worked with teenagers, there's the thought that it could like move around in the body too, and it like won't stay in that one place. Mm hmm definitely. You said? Worried about the insertion. Worried about the insertion. Okay. Anything else? Okay. What about the uh, the fact that it's just something that's there, and you have to just have faith that it's working? You have no control over it. You can't touch it. You can't see it. You can't feel it. You can't do anything with it. Um, that's also all of all of those um, that you mentioned are are definitely concerns. That's also that. That's been one of the one of the biggest barriers. Um, when I've done contraceptive counseling is that I'm just supposed to be okay with it just being there. It's just there. It's working. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, I've also had instances where we see um, various folks once a month come in for a pregnancy test. Has anybody had that happen? Right? Yeah. And they keep coming up negative. And you try to reassure them that yes, yes, it is working. Yes, it is doing its job. Yeah. So that's definitely one a lot of the barriers too is, is the user control, right? Because a pill, you can physically touch it and you know it's going in your mouth. You're swallowing it, you have control over that. 
the the next plan on um, you know oftentimes when I when I do uh, uh, counseling for long uh, longer term methods um, when it's the IUD versus the implant um, I get to the implant and we show them the little arm demo and they can touch it it's really they, they choose the, the implant because they can touch it they know it's there they know it's not moving they know it's not coming out um, they know that if they go to dance class it just didn't magically fall out right so they can physically touch it Correct. Yes, that's also, did everybody hear that? Yeah. So uh, she was speaking towards um, being able to touch the strings, uh, which means that you would have to physically insert fingers into your body to actually touch them. A lot of folks are not comfortable with that. So yes, that's also a barrier um, and also a reason why somebody doesn't want that inside of them. Thank you. Any other examples? Anything else that you all can think of in terms of user control? I don't want anything in my body. Um, Body autonomy, what do I mean by that? You're like, why don't you tell me? <laughs> you were about to say something. <laughs> your own natural cycle. Yeah. And being in control of it, too. Correct. Okay, that's exactly right. So this is going to lead to my next slide here that um, can actually be of its own presentation, but body autonomy. Also, um, you know, we talked about some sterilization, but there are some folks that you may be, come across um, as contraceptive counselors that have been affected historically from people, folks being sterilized without their knowledge, right? So they want to have control over what goes in their body. Um, and you know, it might not be an issue or we might think it's, a, think it's a silly issue or an issue that shouldn't be an issue, but historically there have been some folks who have been affected in that sense that they have been, um, that, they, that they have had been oppressed in the sense of being sterilized without their knowledge. Um, and sometimes people deter from getting an IUD because we consider that's comparable to uh, temporary sterilization. You had a question? Working with Mm -hmm. so yeah, to yeah, exactly. These stories have definitely been passed on. So it's a really fine line that we walk. Um, you know, I know that we get very, very excited. And this has happened to me. There have been instances. And I've also, I've had to check myself in this sense that we get very excited with, um, you know, you live in a rural area. You have to travel 50 miles to get your birth control. Why not get an IUD, right? Why not get an implant? Um, and it's a fun, what, what, I, what I mean by we walk a fine line is that we get so excited about it that makes them excited, but it might not be the, the method that they want to use. Um, sometimes we, we might think there are certain people or populations that um, we might think um, need an IUD. You know, why, are you, why are you reproducing? I see you here, you're pregnant again. Um, and this is real life stuff. <laughs> this is stuff you know, that I've come across. Um, so uh, you know, I've, I, we've heard this word a lot today, quite a bit, reproductive justice. Um, and this is where all of this comes in. Our own biases can come in. They can, it's really easy to sneak in to contraceptive counseling. So please, if you need to check yourself or check check a, a, a co-worker, I encourage you and challenge you to do so because it's really easy because they're seeing us as experts, because they're, we might be the only folks that, we, that they see. They, they see us as a go-to person, right? And we are not necessarily the person who knows what's best for them, right? We hold all this knowledge and we can spit out this knowledge you know, all of those methods of birth control in seven minutes and you're really excited and you want to help them, but it's really easy to sneak our own bias in there, okay? What do I mean by, <laughs> go ahead. I'm oh, sorry, you need to answer this question. So, uh, in the last talk and your talk, this is, this is a new term for me. Okay. I've been doing this for a long time. And I'm feeling a little uncomfortable that maybe I am the appropriate provider based on what you're saying. I hope today we're going to have a good discussion about this. Sure. Is there a talk about this today or is this all we're doing? Um, so it's going to be a brief overview, but if you have any questions or a little bit more um, in depth, there are really good resources out there. This is not, d by no means does this, I want you to go away with this as like questioning yourself, um, 
whether I'm a good provider or not, or whether um, I'm, I'm not giving the best, um, am I giving the best birth control counseling that I can um, and trying to force someone or coerce someone to do it. Not politically neutral, but neutral in, this ter in the sense that you're talking about all methods, right? So in my experience, I've come across um, instances where we only talk about IUDs, but we're not giving everybody the option of every single, every single method. Again, I understand the time crunches that we're in, um, but people deserve that, right? People deserve to make those decisions on their own. People deserve to have all of the information that we have to give them so that they can make the right choices. Because ultimately the goal is to have people use the methods that they want to use so that they use them correctly, right? What, what would happen if we coerce someone or encourage, really excitedly encourage someone to use a pill method that maybe they didn't want to do and they did want to do an IUD? What would be the result of that? Somebody tell me. Yeah, <laughs> right? They're like, I can't keep up with a birth control pill every single morning, so they stop using it and then the result is an unintended pregnancy when they want an IUD, okay? I don't want to make you uncomfortable, but sometimes this can be uncomfortable.